Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have a fun, quick new album to show you called the Z Flap album. Now, this particular album in these papers is the one that I've designed to go into my nativity set for those of you who have gotten that kit. But it's a perfect album that can work for pretty much any theme or any um, paper line. It really is um, super simple and super fast. Inside there are pages that have a flap on one side, a pocket on the other. We'll hold That pocket will hold four by six photos and mats. Um, so each page has a flap. On the back side of the flap you could also mat this and have photos or it can be a great journaling spot. This is a beautiful fabric, uh, Fab Scraps paper um, a nativity, um, and I cannot think of the name of it. I'll post it in the, the um, down at the bottom, all of the um, information as to what the, I can't think of the name of this paper. can't believe I'm blanking completely on that. Um, so I have two more pages to go here, in here. This is done with my Stack the Deck binding. There is a YouTube video um, from about three years ago with the Stack the Deck binding, if you're not familiar um, with that, I use it frequently in many of my patterns. But let's go ahead and get rolling on how to put this album together. As I said, it's a super fast one to do. First off, out you're going to need six pa papers, or two papers, six sheets each of 8.5 by 11 um, cardstock. It can be um, two different colors. It can be to low contrast to high contrast. In this one I'm using a cream colored parchment and a gray parchment. So, um, and you'll just need six sheets of each of the colors for that. Now, how I've done it is I've got three of them that have the, the pocket portion of the page in the gray with the cream flap, and then I have three of them done with the cream page with the gray flaps. You can do them all the same. You can do them alternating like I did. Either way is going to work. It really doesn't matter, but you will need six sheets of each. Um, for each page, you will need to cut two for the, these will be the pieces that will create the flaps. You're going to cut two of them that are four and a half by eight and a half. And you're going to score each of them at the five inch line from the left side. So four by eight, four and a half by eight and a half, two of them per page score at the five inch line. We're going to be attaching these together and there's going to be a quarter of an inch overlap. You don't score this line in there. That's just to let you know there is going to be an overlap. <coughs> Excuse me. From the alternating color, or it can be the same color, you're going to cut for each page one of these that is six and a half by eleven. You're going to then score these at the center line, which is at five and a half inches over from your left side. One of these per page, two of these per page. And you will need and so I'm going to do six pages in mine, so I'm going to do six of these, twelve of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble our pages. I'm going to take my two um, pieces that are the same color that I have, that are the four and a half by eight and a half, and they're scored at the five inch line. So I'll go ahead and fold that um, score line. <coughs> Excuse me. On both of them. Now on this narrower section. I'm going to put some quarter inch tape. It can also be glued, but the quarter inch tape means you don't have to measure. So I this is quarter inch score tape. So what I'm doing is I'm going to attach the two narrower sections together. So I'm going to take the narrower section of this one, and I want these to be to when they're together, they form a Z. So I'm going to attach this one has a valley fold, this one has a mountain fold, and if I line that up, the, when I put the tape on, I put it right at the edge of my paper, and then I set this one right at the edge of that tape, I have that nice quarter of an inch, oops, quarter of an inch overlap. So there's the seam between the two, and they overlap that quarter of an inch. 
and this makes the Z flap portion. Okay, so you make one of these for each of the pages. Then to create the pocket portion of the page, you're going to take your six and a half by eleven inch, or is it five and a half, six and a half, six and a half by eleven piece, and fold it at its center score line. So that's going to create the pockets. Now what's going to happen is this center section of my Z shape, the center section is going to slip down inside of that folded portion and it comes pops up about <coughs> placement is you have about a quarter of an inch here at this bottom you'll have a flap this this end is open this is where we're going to attach our binding this is a flip album it's going to flip this one will be on this side all right so we're going to lay it down with my open portion up I have my quarter of an inch, in, inch down here by the fold. I'm going to open this flap. I'm going to be holding this in place because I don't want it to come apart. I'm going to hold this in place, fold my flap back, fold this down, and then I'm going to run some glue along that edge. Now I do want to use glue instead of um, adhesive because I don't want my tags to get caught up in the adhesive. So you always want to use glue instead of adhesive. So now I will take and fold this back down again and engage that glue. Of course it always oozes out for me because I always get too much coming out. There we go. So it's glued next to the fold of the flap. So always make sure it's glued next to that fold. I can now flip this over and now my fold will be at the top. The opening will be at the bottom. I'm going to open this up lift this up and run my glue not a lot so that it's aligning with the edge of my paper fold the pocket part down engage the glue and you fold your flap back over so back to where we started from I now have it open on this side here's my flap it's attached underneath the flap when I flip over, it's open on the side opposite my fold of my flap, and here's my flap. Now I'm going to put a finger punch into my page, so I'm going to center my punch. Sorry, I'm going to put my head in the middle so I can see. And so that my punch is centered on this section underneath, not my, my pocket section, but this. Um, portion right here. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Now you can mark your center if you wish or you can just eyeball it the way that I do. So that gives me a finger pull so for my my um, so you can see see there's a Z, the flap Z with this folding up and around it. Let's do one more real quick. Again, the narrower sections of these four and a half by eight and a half sections are what you're going to um, overlap and connect together. So not the wider ones, the narrower ones. And again, I have that quarter inch tape running right next to the edge. If I use this to line up on there and stick that down, So then one flap goes back, one goes to the front, forming that Z flap. And then I have my pocket section that is scored at its center line at five and a half inches. I'm going to fold that. And then I'm going to take my Z flap and slide it down in between the sections of my pocket portion. I'll center it. I'll center it horizontally and then vertically it comes up to where it is about a quarter of an inch up from the fold. So I have my opening at the top, 
fold at the bottom, set this down. These overhang a little bit on each side. I'm going to lift my flap up, lift the front of the pocket up, keeping sure that everything stays where it needs to be underneath. Hold it in place. Add my glue. Glue is again preferred over adhesive because your adhesive never really dries. It stays sticky and your tags get caught in it. So if you've ever had problems with tags getting caught inside your pockets, that's why. So glue will dry and won't remain tacky. Flip this over again, lift my flap, lift the front of the pocket, run my bead of glue. that little excess down there at the end, drop my pocket back in place, engage my glue along the side, and flip my flap. So now I'm ready to punch my thumb pull again. And punch. Same thing over on this side. Centering it on <coughs> the Z pocket section. So there, now I have two, and these are opposite, as you can see. Cream flap, gray pocket, cream pocket, gray flap. So they're alternating. And then when I attach them into the book, they also alternate. alternate. Now on my flap, on this album, I am going ahead and using one of my corner chompers, the scallop, and rounding off the corners of those flaps. I've then done the same thing when I cut my mats to go onto these flaps. They're also cut with the scallop as well as my mats um, that go on my um, pages. So now I have these already pre-cut to attach onto here. You'll want to ink your edges if you choose. And then I've also got the larger pieces that go underneath. And I like to have a little border around mine so you can you can have that border if you don't want to, you can have a larger border, smaller border. Um, you can choose how you want to do that. Now, this is going to cover over that thumb pull that I just cut. So what I want to do is take my pencil and I'm going to mark right at the edges of where that circle is. And then I'm going to take a punch that is, um, this is a one and three quarter punch, so I'm going to take my two inch punch so that I have that little bit of border and I'm going to to use those markings and allow I can see them what are they I didn't mark them well enough I can't see them look at the bottom there there see it a little bit better so then I can push this in there now I have my center line on this Fisker's punch mark so I can center and I come back about an eighth of an inch from that center line. So that way when I go to attach this, I have that same border going around my circle as well. So then I can go ahead and attach these onto my pages. Do the same thing on the flip side. I'm not going to take the time to do that right at this minute. I'm just going to go ahead and attach these pages into my book for you. All right, so <coughs> let me go over the binding system real quick. Um, though Stack the Deck has become extremely popular since I introduced it um, about three years ago now, a lot of people have been using it. Um, this is a um, slight dimensional variation on, on the original one. But all of them start out with a channel in the center. There's a center channel, and that channel gets progressively bigger with each subsequent layer of the stack. So the first one is going to have a quarter inch space. The next one is going to have three quarters of an inch space. And the last one will have an inch and a quarter. So you can see they get progressively um, larger so that there's always a quarter of an inch gap between each of the pages. The fins then can vary inside the in size. The original Stack the Deck had three quarter inch fins. I've used half inch fins. I've used quarter inch. These are three eighths inch fins. So our first um, piece of the Stack the Deck is going to be 
one inch wide by the width of my page, which is six and a half. The second one is going to be an inch and a half by the six and a half. And the third one is going to be two inches by the six and a half. So then I've scored three eighths of an inch in on each side on all three stack units. They all have the same size fin, which is a 3 8 inch. I'm then going to apply either glue or score tape to the back or other aggressive tape like red tape, one of those other kinds, miracle tape. And then I'm going to center it on the neck size up stack. So I'm essentially stacking the deck. So then each one stacks up on top of the previous one and you should have if your gap between your pages is a quarter of an inch, you should have a gap on each side of half an inch. So then I can fold all my fins up and they're ready to have my pages attached to them. So here's your stack the deck unit. You can attach your pages while your stack the deck unit is not attached or you can attach it first to your covers. Now your covers are going to be six inches tall because this is a flip album, seven inches wide, six inches tall. Your spine piece is going to be one and three quarters inches wide by the seven inches long. Our spine piece is what's going to hold our stack the deck unit. Um, so let me just show you on this one. For your spine, both on the inside and the outside, you're going to cut a piece that's three inches by seven inches. You're going to take your spine piece, and I cover both sides of it entirely um, with strips of my score tape or my glue. If you're going to use glue, you want to make sure it dries first before you manipulate it too much. So I'm going to attach that paper to the outside of my spine, and as you can see, it extends on the outside. Um, a little over half an inch. It's about five eighths of an inch. So you're going to attach that to your paper. So then once your paper is attached to your spine with that overhang, your other cover will attach to that over overlap. You'll then on the inside of your paper uh, of your book, you'll attach uh, a second piece of three by seven inch over it. Now, when you are attaching your cover and your spine together with that paper, you want to make sure you're allowing a gap that's equal to about two thicknesses of your chipboard or a good rule of thumb is about an eighth of an inch. If you make it narrower than that, it tends to stress your paper and you'll have more issues with cracking. If you um, go ahead and leave a nice generous gap, you'll have less cracking issues. But paper is paper and it can crack. So that's done a zillion and two of these different kinds of covers um, and you can always see that on, on a, one of my other videos. Um, <coughs> but there you can see there's the spine paper over on my cover and then it flips up and inside you also have that. You can always um, make this a little bit wider and punch the edge, that sort of thing if you want to. So let's go ahead and take and put these um, last two pages in. This page is a gray, so my next page is going to be a cream. Now remember this open edge. We're going to take some glue. You can do this also with the aggressive strong tape if you prefer, but I tend to find most people prefer the glue. Um, it's a little bit more forgiving. You can wiggle it around a little bit for a second, whereas the tape, once it's there, it's there. So then I'm going to open up those two, or open up that section, place it sandwiching the fin of the stack the deck and lining up the edges. But I'm going to sandwich that in there. Wipe away the excess glue. Same on this side. Engage the glue with your paper. You always want to press it into place so that it gets engaged with it. So there's that page. And then my next page, I'm going to do the same thing. My open edge sandwiches my fin of my binding in between those two open sections, or those two um, sides of the pocket. Glue doesn't have to be spread on there per really pretty because it's not going to show. 
So open that up. Sandwich the fin. And attach it down. Take out for excess glue. Make sure your glue is engaged completely. That way if you know if you got not don't have quite enough and you need to add some more in there, you can. So that gives me my six pages for my album. And then once I get those in there, then I can go ahead and attach my matting to my pages. And I can also then add pockets. These are four by six mats. It can be go a little bit larger than that, but those are going to fit then down inside um, the pocket. And there you go. It's that fast. It's that easy. At that point, then you can go ahead and embellish your cover with flowers, um, uh, the cutouts, all sorts of um, pretty much anything, whatever kind of embellishment you want to add to it. But um, it is a quick, it's an easy album to make. Um, great for pretty much any subject matter. So um, once again, the Z Flap album. I don't have a written tutorial for it. I may do one here um, in the future, so stay tuned if you, you prefer to have your tutorials in written form rather than just here um, on YouTube. But um, there you go. So that is the Z Flap album, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks a bunch.